Welcome to my new calculus channel. I am John Gabriel. In this YouTube video, I am going to talk about Euler or Euler and his shortcomings. So, what you're looking at on the screen right now is a page from the Elements of Algebra, which was written by Euler or Euler, and he called these points 78, 79, etc. He called them articles. So in article 78, he explains how if you have a fraction and the denominators increase, then these fractions go on continually to become smaller. So uh, he, he basically says that for the more you divide an integer or the greater the number of parts into which you distribute it, the less does each of those parts become. So he refers to this particular article again in 81. He says over here, we can never, therefore, arrive completely at zero or nothing, however great the denominator may be. And consequently, as those fractions must always preserve a certain quantity, we may continue the series of fractions in the 78th article without interruption. This circumstance has introduced the expression that the denominator must be infinite. Well, that's where Euler's problems began. Okay, so he's saying over here that the denominator must be infinite or infinitely great in order that the fraction may be reduced to zero or to nothing. Hence the word infinite in reality signifies here that we can never arrive at the end of the series of the above mentioned fractions. Now notice that he said we can never arrive at the end of the series of the above mentioned fractions. So what you what Euler is telling you here is that if you have one plus or just one, one over two, one over three, one over four, etc. is that as this here becomes very big, then you can't arrive at the end of it. But in the same breath, he says that the fraction may be reduced to zero if the denominator is infinite. But can the denominator ever be infinite here? In other words, what Euler is telling you is that one divided by infinity is equal to zero. And we'll see that that's exactly what he goes on to say later on. He says here, to express this idea, according to the sense of it above mentioned, we make use of the sign infinity, which consequently indicates a number infinitely great. So he, he's even going a step forward and calling infinity a number, which obviously is false because infinity is not a number. And we may therefore say that this fraction, one divided by infinity, is in reality nothing. In reality? <laughs> That, that's really absurd because a fraction cannot be reduced to nothing so he contradicts himself in the next uh, uh, sentence in the next part of the sentence first of all he says one over infinity is in reality nothing and then a fraction cannot be reduced to nothing so what is one over infinity if it's not a fraction until the d and then he, he says until the denominator has been increased to infinity well that's just total nonsense because this denominator here can never be increased to infinity. You can't have this. This doesn't make sense. I can tell you why Euler and a lot of the mathematicians before him didn't really arrive at the correct conclusions is that they never understood what it means for a number to be a fraction. So. Euler didn't understand that if you have a over b, b means 
the number of equal parts that the unit has been divided up into. Okay. Clearly, it's impossible to have a unit divided into infinitely many parts. That's like saying, that's like saying, take this interval and consider each of these points here. Well, of course, you can't do that because you can't count points. Consequently, a lot of the junk theory in mathematics, in mainstream mathematics, is based on these wrong ideas. Um, it doesn't make sense to say one divided by infinity, and it also is, although it's defined to say 1 over 0, it's meaningless because you cannot divide the unit into zero equal parts, okay? That's what this 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 denominator means, or the consequent in a fraction. It means the number of equal parts that the unit has been divided into. All right. So now, <coughs> the Euler goes on to say it is more necessary to pay attention to this idea of infinity as it is derived from the first elements of our knowledge and as it will be of the greatest importance in the following part of this treatise. Did you get that? In other words, he's basing the rest of his ideas on that nonsense. We may here deduce from it a few consequences that are extremely curious and worthy of attention. The fraction, so now he calls it a fraction, but early on uh, he said it's in reality nothing and because a fraction cannot be reduced to nothing represents the quotient resulting from the division of the dividend one by the divisor infinity but infinity cannot be a divisor the divisor has to be a number now we know that if we divide the dividend one by the quotient <laughs> one so now all of a sudden this is a quotient it's not only not a fraction it's a quotient Euler really is very confused here, which is equal to nothing. We again obtain the divisor. As you can see, Euler made some serious mistakes, and he goes on to make some more very serious mistakes in Article 84, where he says, <coughs> This opinion is inconsistent with the just principles which we have lay down for one divided by zero signifying a number infinitely great how can you signify a number infinitely great and two over zero being incons incontestably the double of one over zero well that's also just nonsense and so Euler lays the foundation of the nonsense that's going to come further on by assuming that 1 over 0 and 1 over infinity is a valid concept, okay? And so, anyway, Euler continues, and if we go to page 127 of the same document that he wrote, let's go there. He deals with uh, this division process, oops, I think I've gone too far. This division process, which I described to you earlier on, so for example, this fraction 1 over a, 1 over a here that you see, 1 over 1 minus a, right over here, 1 over 1 minus a, can be exhibited in the following form. So I showed you in in great detail how you can express 1 over 1 minus a like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, or like this, etc. And I showed that to you in this particular vision, in this particular video over, over here. Newton and his fake infinite series, and exactly what is division. Okay, and I also covered a little bit of it in y is one third not equal to 0 0.3 occurring. So now, uh, Euler continues and says, if we follow the same process, in this line here, if we follow the same process with regard to the second expression, and we reduce it, we eventually come back to 1 over 1 minus a. Similarly, um, you can do this, and he continues to say that this being the case, we may continue the series as far as we please, 
without being under the necessity of performing any more calculations. Okay, so, and here he gives uh, a version up to A8. Or we might continue this farther. Now, this is where he, he really goes astray here. And he says, and still go on without end, for which reason it may be said that the proposed fraction has been resolved into an infinite series. That's absolute garbage. You cannot resolve this fraction, 1 over 1 minus a, into an infinite series. Because an infinite series does not have a last term, okay? This is a last term in this case. And in the previous uh, examples that you saw over here, all of these have a last term, okay? The last term here is that, the last term here is that and that, and that, and so on. So all of them have a last term, and those are exact. Those are the closed form of 1 over 1 minus a. So watch how he begins to go horribly wrong in Article 293. He says, let a equal to 1. And, and so he gets 1 plus 1 plus 1 ad infinitum, which is obviously a total load of crap. Um, uh, he continues to go astray, horribly astray. Uh, just read on from page 127 and see the ill-formed conclusions he reaches. But that's probably the least of his worries because once you get to page 207, and let's go over there now to page 207, page 207, you'll see where this first notion comes up in, in mainstream mathematics. In other words, the notion that 0 0.999 dot 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 is equal to 1. It's wrong, okay? And Euler or Euler just defined it that way, right? So he knew that you could write uh, a series or a fraction in terms of a series and just decided that the sum is equal to the infinite number of terms. But there is no infinite number of terms, okay? So Euler understood this process. He understood the process that if you had 0 0.9 plus 0 0.09 plus 0 0.009 plus dot 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 that this has a limit which is 1 okay but he went ahead and he defined he defined this to be s meaning sum and he defined it to be the limit okay so he defined it to be the limit of s that was a really big mistake on his part because it doesn't make sense to define 0 0.999 dot 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 to be anything. Anything with an ellipsis behind it is meaningless rot. Okay, You simply cannot throw away the l last term, add an ellipsis and say that that's equal to the sum. That's not true because an infinite an infinite number of terms is not possible, okay? Infinite number of terms is simply not possible. Addition is a finite operation. You can add those two, and then you can add the result of those with that, and, and so on. But you simply cannot add all these up and say that they're equal to one. And it's definitely not true because 1 minus 1 over 10 to the n is the function that generates these partial sums. Okay, so for example, if we had to put a 1 there, S1, we'd get 0 0.9, and S2, we'd get 0 0.99, and so on, okay? 0 0.999. It's impossible to complete an infinite sum, and it doesn't make sense either to define an infinite sum to be the limit 
of a series with an ellipsis it doesn't make sense. There is no such thing as an infinite series. <clears throat> and here we see the very first occurrence of this rot in mathematics. He says, let the now be given the infinite progression, 9 plus 9 tenths, etc. And you Euler understood that uh, the limit, the limit, notice, of an infinite uh, series, which he called, is A over 1 minus R. Yes, where A is the first term and R is the common ratio. So this is the limit. But you, Euler went ahead and said, let's just go ahead and call it the sum. Unfortunately, when you look at the sum to n terms, that's equal to A 1 minus R to the n over 1 minus R. Okay, And that's the same as A over 1 minus r minus a r to the n over 1 minus r. Now, if you just throw away this particular term, that's what you'll get, right? And that's essentially what Euler did. He just tossed away the last term in all of these examples here. And so he d he goes ahead and he simply defines this to be equal to the limit, which is 10. And that, of course, is nonsense, and it has led to a lot of wrong things in mainstream mathematics, a lot of wrong conclusions. Conclusions such as uh, 0 0.333, 0. Oh, hang on a second. 0 0.333 dot 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 p equal to a third. That's not true. Okay. The limit of 0 0.3 plus 0 0.03 plus 0 0.003, the limit of this series is equal to a third. But it makes no sense to say that this sum, which is impossible, is equal to a third. And it makes no sense to define it that way either because there's always a missing term there as you've seen from my previous videos the ones that I showed you here and that missing term means you never have an exact value unless you include that term. So why look at the limit and define it that way? It makes no sense at all. And that's really where Euler slip, slipped up pretty badly and it did affect the rest of mainstream mathematics so that today we're still having stupid people saying things like this 0 0.999 dot 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 is equal to 1. Okay, so that's all I really wanted to cover in this uh, YouTube video. I'm John Gabriel and this is the New Calculus Channel. Join me again next time.